So I started off by tracing the outline of the guitar, my LTD H3 1000 onto a piece of cardboard and then I drew out the shape of the uh, just one half of it because I didn't have a big enough sheet to do both plus what I did was after I drew it and cut it out I transferred it to this piece of masonite. I did the one half first. Get down. I did the one half first and I put notches on the center line on both ends and, and uh, put marks on the masonite and drew the one half. Then I flipped it over and did the other half and you can see the lines don't quite match up but I will square those up with a ruler now what I'm going to do <coughs> is cut this out this masonite pattern and I'm going to use that for the top or the bottom to cut the, the piece for those and uh, I've got to lay my one by along the edge and draw outside of it on to the next piece which will be the uh, flooring the subfloor sheathing and then I'll cut one of those and then I'll use that as a pattern for the other part of it and then I will also make another one to use for a pattern for the next one because I think I'm gonna make a few of these possibly to sell Okay, you may be wondering why I'm making this pattern and then I still have to make another pattern. Well, this pattern is for the interior. So I'm going to use this to create the pattern for the exterior and to create the styrofoam piece that goes on the inside. So I'm going to need this to use for all the styrofoam inserts <laughs> all right there it is the interior pattern is cut out i gotta sand the edges level them out a little bit and then transfer it to the plywood i am going to create the outside border of the top and bottom pieces or front and back whatever you want to call it by standing the uh, one buys up along the edge of the pattern that I already created and then drawing the line On the outside of it. I'll go all the way around the whole thing like that And I'm going to cut on the outside of the line So that it's a little large and I can trim that off after I've got all the edges glued on So there it is the first part I'm going to use that to trace out the, the next part and then I'm saving the scraps to use for decoration on this. this guitar case is going to need a third part for the top because it's for a guitar with a carved top. The H3 1000 has a bit of an arch top so this case is going to be a little taller. It's also got a Floyd Rose. So I want to make sure I've got plenty of space and plenty of padding on the top. 
so that I don't put any pressure on any of the parts that I don't want pressure on. And since I'm going for this modern casket look, I need another layer, I guess you'd say. You'll see when I get it that far. I want this top piece to be smaller. So I'm going to use this piece of scrap wood cut out of a 2x4 to make a smaller border on the inside and cut that out instead of the outside line that I've got. I went ahead and cut two more panels out of the rest of the plywood for the next one. And I've still got a piece left over that's not really big enough for anything except decorations or some other small projects. Oh, and stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll let you in on a little secret. So if you've ever wondered why it takes me so long to build these guitar cases and make the videos, well, this is why. <laughs> I'm ready to glue on the next board and I got three cats sleeping on the, on the guitar case. Just a real quick note on my construction on the corner part of the side. I, it took me a little finagling to get the, the angle to work. But the end of this board is pretty much straight. And obviously the other one's angled. So that this will butt up to that. And then I've got the hole drilled through here into this. Two holes actually for screws. And then there's uh, a big hole there for the screw head to go in which I'm going to fill with a dowel rod and my putty stuff. So obviously the, the plywood's warped a little bit, so I'm going to clamp it down. And when I do that and then put the screws in it, it's going to draw this up and make it nice and tight, like over here on this side, which I've already got done. There'll be a little bit of excess hanging over right here, which I will sand off. I've got the main body of the case done now. The sides are glued and screwed on. Everything's been sanded and routed flush. I've still got a little gap there I gotta fill because you know the boards are warped. Uh, and I gotta sand all the little corners because the, uh, the boards I used are not all exactly the same thickness or width uh, you know they're factory cut so I didn't run them through my table saw to make sure they were all exactly the same so I got to sand those a little bit and then I got to do the lid so the lids coming up next all right the coffin case is this far along I'm going to put that on hold temporarily and work on the green firefly guitar all right. one thing about this one I didn't notice when I did the review I've got some hairline cracks in the fingerboard. There are, you can see the, the polish, the compound in there a little bit. They're not really bad. I'm not going to worry about them. Uh, it's a cheap guitar. I'm just going to play it and beat it up. But I do want to say back in the early 90s, like somewhere between 91 and 93, there was a music store up north in Illinois that had a Brand new Gibson SG Special, and it had a crack, and I mean a real big crack, a noticeable crack, all the way down through here. It was crazy how big this crack was. I'm like, I think they sent it back finally, but I told them, I said, man, you're not going to be able to sell this thing with this, this uh, fingerboard like that. So I don't know what happened, how it happened, but this was brand new, still had the tags on it and everything. And they were wanting full price for it. So uh, that's kind of crazy. But this one, we're going to switch the pickups. I was going to put X2Ns in it, but I changed my mind. I think I'm going to go with the Bill Lawrence XL500s because I've got a couple of those. And I took them out of another guitar that I had them in for a while. And I, I think I want to put those in here. Uh, we're going to remove this part of the plastic around this thing because this plastic is the bridge is resting on it and it won't let the action go down any farther and the strings are a little too high so 
going to work on that. I might take a little bit off the bottom of the bridge because it's got that kind of arch thing for an arch top and it doesn't need to be. It needs to be flat. So I might take a little bit off of that too. And, uh, and I've got a problem with the, the tone knob. Uh, it's I've got a short. It's buzzing real bad. So we're going to look into that. The bottom of the bridge reads KD1. So I don't know what that means. The one is probably the mold it came out of. KD, I don't know. So that might help some of you guys. Interesting note about the Firefly V. The potentiometers go through the body. So these are loaded from the back. And it still has the pick guard. Usually when you got a pick guard, the potentiometers are loaded onto the pick guard. And then you've got a cavity right here. So because of that, there wasn't a whole lot of room for the, uh, the knobs. They were barely hanging on to the posts because the potentiometer posts are kind of short. So they actually could have shipped this one out without the pit guard on it and just sent the pit guard like the blue one. It would have been pretty cool like that just to be all green. But it's got all these little holes in it now, so pit guard's got to go back on. So I'm going to cut off that area right there and then see what it looks like. I might have to do some more trimming back here because I'm thinking this is going to look kind of weird. So it might just come straight off or come up curved or something. But I'm going to start with those two cuts there. All right, I got the pick guard trimmed down. Uh, a little piece snapped off right there. It came up to a point and when I was working on it, it just snapped off. So it's not a big deal. It looks okay like that. Uh, the back has some kind of shielding tape on it. It's not very good. You see there where it didn't really stick. So I'll probably so I used my file and took a little bit off both ends. More so on the treble side because that was the side that was really high and uh, a little less on the, the base side because it wasn't too bad. And I also took a little bit off of this part here and a little bit more off of this part here so it'll just ride just a little bit lower so I think that should be enough to solve my problems. I found the grounding problem pretty quick. The ground wire wasn't attached to the potentiometer. That part's just laying there bare. This part is the piece that goes into the uh, stud mount. So I'm going to replace the whole thing with a piece of copper. Okay, by now you guys should know I tend to change my mind. So I did it again. I got the ground wire fixed. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to leave those stock pickups in it. And work with them for a while and see how I like them. I mean, because they sound just like the other ones, the ones in the blue one, and they sound okay. Uh, and I'm going to make sure everything works okay. And I found out the, the tone potentiometer, when you turn it all the way up, it, it cuts out. It's like it, it spins too far or something. So if you want the full effect of the treble, you have to back it off a little bit from full on all the way up. So that's just something I have to work around for now because I don't feel like pulling it all apart and replacing the potentiometer right now. So, and I put the uh, DR neon green strings on it, the 9 through 42. Uh, they look cool and it sounds good. So I'm just gonna work with it like that for now. And then uh, we'll get back to it later because I got a lot of <clears throat> sets of pickups and I don't have enough guitars for them yet. So we're going to have to do something about that. All right. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video.